Have you seen Angular 17's new defer block? It's amazing. We can now easily lazy load standalone components with a very developer friendly API. So in this video, we will go through the whole API and at the end, we will look at the concrete example. So make sure you stick till the end. The defer syntax allows us to lazy load any Angular standalone component with great developer experience and outstanding API that covers almost every imaginable use case. The most basic usage of defer is to wrap a component in the template inside a defer block. When we wrap a component such as the heavy component, it tells the Angular compiler to separate this component into its own JavaScript nice. bundle. The real magic happens when this bundle isn't loaded right away, but only when the app component's template is actually rendered. It's a smart way to manage resources. It means we load the heavy component only when needed, which is perfect for optimizing our app's performance. This example is cool, but you will probably not see it like this in practice. Let's take a look at a more realistic example like a dashboard that renders a heavy chart. Here it becomes easier to understand the practical benefits of the defer feature in Angular 17, especially in terms of enhancing performance. In this example, we lazy load the My Company chart component. We can see that defer has much more to offer than just lazy loading. It also has the possibilities of rendering a placeholder, a loading indicator and an error template. Thomas Tryon crafted an amazing visualization of the features here on our Angular Experts blog. Make sure to follow Thomas on X at at Thomas Tryon for more insightful content like this. Also make sure to check out our blog on angularexperts.io. The link to Thomas's profile and the link to our blog post you will find below in the description. When you start an application, initially the placeholder gets rendered. Then once the component gets loaded, we have the possibility to display a loading template like a spinner for example. Once the defer component is loaded, it gets displayed. If something goes wrong, we display the error template. So this all sounds nice, but you probably wonder when does our loading actually begin? To answer this question, we have to take a closer look at the defer API, which accepts two params in between its parentheses, a trigger and a prefetch config. The trigger defines the when and how of lazy loading our component. It's all about timing and conditions, ensuring that components load exactly when they're needed. With the prefetch, on the other hand, we can get strategic about efficiency. It allows us to decide if, when and how the component's lazy bundle should be prefetched. Let's take a closer look at the triggers. There are currently two types of defer triggers. On, which is a declarative trigger, and when, which is an imperative trigger. So on basically uses predefined behaviors, while when uses any kind of custom logic that returns true or false. So this could be a component property, a method, a signal, or even an RxJS string. So let's take a quick tour through the defer triggers. First, we have the immediate trigger. The immediate trigger means as soon as the parent component starts doing its thing, the lazy loading kicks in. Next, we have the idle trigger, which is the default. So behind the scenes, Angular will use the request idle callback to load our deferred component when the browser has some spare moment. Next, we have the timer trigger, which accepts a delay. So do you want to delay the loading of the component? Well, just use delay, pass in a timer, and your component will load after the timer runs out. Next, we have viewport. You can either use viewport standalone or you can pass in a target. In my opinion, this is the coolest trigger of them all. Under the hood, it uses the intersection observer to decide when a component's placeholder or the component itself enters the viewport and then it starts loading the deferred component. Next, we have the hover trigger. This trigger waits for a hover over the placeholder or any specified target using mouse enter and focusing events. The last trigger is interaction. This trigger responds to clicks and key downs on the placeholder or any chosen target. So it's like having a toolkit to perfectly time your component's grand entrance. So far we've focused on the defer feature, but let's not forget the equally important placeholder. The placeholder is crucial, especially for some of the on triggers we discussed. When you don't specify a target, placeholder steps in as the default target. The placeholder allows us to specify what should be rendered before the loading of the lazy component was initiated. It is also important when using SSR or SSG. In those scenarios, the placeholder gets server-side rendered. Once the loading starts, the placeholder disappears and the loading block is shown. The loading block has a neat trick up its sleeve with the minimum option, which sets how long its content stays visible. 
Plus, there's an after option too. This one decides the minimum time needed for the loading process before the loading block even makes an appearance. Those are pretty neat options to fine tune how your spinner will be shown and to avoid some flickering on the page. The error block on the other hand is our safety net. So we can show an error block whenever something goes wrong. So we have now seen the different block types and the type of triggers, but there is more. Let's take a look at the prefetch statements. Prefetch allows us to specify when and how to preload components. And here's a key point. If you use multiple prefetch statements, they work together using a logical OR operator. This means Angular will prefetch the component as soon as any of the specified condition is met, optimizing loading in a smart and an efficient way. When it comes to prefetching, there are two types of triggers. Again, we have an on trigger, which is a declarative trigger. So this is basically the straightforward choice. You just pick one from the predefined behaviors like idle, timer or viewport. And then again, we also have a when trigger, which is an imperative trigger, the same as with defer. Here you can pass in any kind of expression that just resolves to a Boolean, indicating if it's true or false. So let's take a look at the concrete example. Here we use the defer block with an on hover trigger to defer the loading of my company chart. Then in the meantime, we want to display a placeholder, which is my company card. We also use a loading block to display some sort of spinner. And we say the minimum is 200 milliseconds. And after 20, 200 milliseconds, we start showing the spinner. If something goes wrong, we show the error message. Okay, we're, here we have the running application. And we can see that initially everything gets loaded. Now to simulate the loading, I will quickly toggle on a slow 3G network. So now nothing happens, but once I hover my card, I can see that the loading spinner is shown and I can also see that our chart chunk gets lazy loaded. So we lazy load our component. Let me also quickly illustrate how the error would look like. So let's do a refresh and let's say we lose connection. So at this point, when we hover, we see that we get the error message. Of course, we can now also improve this example and play around with it. So let's say we would want to prefetch on idle. Let's do the same thing again and see what happens when we prefetch already. So again, we refresh our component or we refresh our application and then we basically again toggle the slow 3G. But we can see that our chunk is already loaded. So now if we hover, the card gets immediately rendered. You can now go ahead and mix and match those triggers and play around and find the perfect scenario for you. There is no limit to your imagination and I think Angular has really produced world-class lazy loading here with an amazing developer-friendly API. That's Angular's deferred feature. If you like this video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel because that's what keeps the channel growing and stay tuned for more Angular tips and tricks.